Well, the Love is Blind finale is here, and after some phone staring, fears of cheating, actual cheating, jet skis, uncomfy conversations, and whatever this whole mess was, it's all come to an end, and we can now say... Finally. Inner peace. Now what? But not before a couple of weddings and one last conversation with good ol' reliable Jimmy and Chelsea. And by that I mean we can always rely on them having an explosive fight every time they sit down together. So, with a Jimmy and Chelsea scene up ahead, you know what that means. I don't have a headache. I'm just preparing. You've done exactly what I would want in a wife. You f***ing do! You told me you her. You just think I'm like full of shit every time I tell you how I feel? I do, I do. Exactly what I would want in a wife, but I don't want to go to the altar. Thank the stars above, we have some sense. However, Jimmy's reasoning is pretty hilarious. Like, check out what he says the final straw was. The other day, with the rest of the guys and the rest of the couples, you've said it like literally three times since then about Amy and Johnny being the strongest couple. Uh-huh, that's the reason why. I mean, he absolutely needs to end this relationship right now, and there are a million good reasons as to why, but come on. Don't think you're fooling us with that being the reason. Why did you treat me like you did today? We had the best day today. Why didn't you tell me that? Why did you waste my time coming here? Because you just wanted to do this? The only opportunity is to tell you when I feel it. I feel like you've known you were going to say no this entire time and you just wasted my time. Just saying, she ain't wrong on this one. Like, once again, he definitely should be saying no, but she ain't wrong. I'm like walking on eggshells with you. I can't tell you things that hurt my feelings because you get so upset. Okay, I had to pause my TV and rewind here to make sure that it was Chelsea who was saying this to Jimmy and not the other way around. Because you get so upset. Like what? But then we start to hear some of the other reasons why Jimmy is upset with Chelsea. Like, for example, how she let it out that he had slept with one of his friends, despite him asking her to keep that private and not say anything in front of the cameras in order to respect his friend's privacy in front of millions of viewers. Do you I'm want still to talking. No, I need to interfere with that. It made me uncomfortable because you guys text and you call all day. Well, that was less recent than your ex-boyfriend that you still hang out with. So I don't, I don't call him and I don't hang out with him. No, I do not. The do first not night that we him. got engaged and we got our phones I back, you FaceTimed him. Oh, ain't no way she was saying all this while also FaceTiming her ex the day they got their phones back. Well, well, well. How the turntables... You broke my trust to you the deepest degree. You broke my trust I didn't so tell bad. the world your deepest, darkest secrets. Your deepest, darkest secrets is f***ing your friend? Oh, these two, what a pair. Well, mercifully, finally, Jimmy and Chelsea are done, and you can cite whatever reason you want as to what the catalyst was for this ending, but either way, I think we can all agree this is the right decision. So, let's put it to rest and never look back, as it's now time for the Bachelor and Bachelorette parties, where AD and Amy are completely unfazed to not see Chelsea show up like... Yeah, that tracks. So it's time to party it up for their last evening, maybe we'll see, as a single person. And you know that Detective AD is here to get to the bottom of how Amy and Johnny have progressed on that not having sex thing. I got listen, it. Listen, listen. We're waiting it out a little bit. Together. <laughs> yeah, not had sex yet. We're having a great time. <laughs> We're having fun. Oh, they might not have hit home plate, but I'm betting you the last few nights with these two have been like... Wined and dined at 69. Ain't no way! That girl is too spicy. She f***ing that man, but... <laughs> good for her. But she f***ing that man. But alright, everyone's feeling good and getting into that right headspace. And first up for their wedding day is Clay and AD. Where AD seems to be the more solid yes, while Clay continues to have some of those reservations he's been expressing all season. After all, he hasn't had the best example of a marriage as his dad, like, cheated on his mom for most of their time together. And speaking of... Dad, 
Clay. What's up, What's man? good? What's good? Hey, I didn't think I was gonna even see you. Ooh, yeah, surely this won't fan any of his fears. My dad always was a suave guy. I looked up to my dad. I loved how smooth he was. So the pros of my dad, I identified it. I wanted to be like my dad, but I didn't know that I took some of his cons as well. But one thing Clay's dad does tell him that's true is that the man who wins in life is the one who thinks he can win. Because if you go into your marriage thinking it's going to fail, or thinking you're not going to be faithful, well, you're just going to end up fulfilling your own prophecy one way or another. Now, whether or not Clay interprets that as be confident and you'll succeed, or if you're not confident, now's the time to get out, that remains to be seen. But it's time for a decision to be made. The family all gathers, these two's moms seem to be BFFs. It's okay. It's okay. You worked for this. Then the officiant begins by letting everyone know how beautiful it is that these two have come together, sight unseen, without any of those superficial attachments. All the superficial things of the world were not a factor for you two. I didn't say all that. I just want to have that reveal door and like, you know, be super turned on by my wife, you know? I just have to be attracted to you. I kind of lean towards more like petite. My, my favorite attribute is like lips. But they then get to the I do's, and as AD prepares to say hers, Amber. Oh. <laughs> do you take Clay to live together in a union of marriage? They pop on this heartbeat sound effect like she's about to say I do in the Temple of Doom. I do. <laughs> and then it's time for Clay to make his decision. AD, I love you. I don't think it's responsible for me to say I do. Uh, I just don't think it's responsible for me to say I do at this point when I still need work. Well, AD is shook. She is surprised, upset, and not happy with this man. I'm sorry. What the f Waste of my f***ing time. I don't want to, like, bash him, y'all, because I love this man, but I just don't and understand. Love him for you. Oh, don't worry, AD. Clay is going to explain everything, and you still won't understand. Marriage is a unity of self, it's a unity of finances, it's a business decision. Huh? I think the finances, I kind of looked at it, brushed it off, but finances is huge to me, and I don't really understand her finances like that. Huh? It's just for me to say, off oh, a great two weeks, this is what, this is gonna be my wife forever, I could not make that decision to you today. Okay, but I'm still waiting for the part where he brings up her finances. I feel kind of like a sacrifice, like, you learned so much about yourself. Yeah, yeah, like, I get that. You used me to, like, yeah. do it. Ooh, that one hits deep. Now Clay doesn't want to end the relationship. He wants to continue to stay together and continue to work on himself. However, earlier in the season, AD did tell Clay that she signed up for the promise that comes with this show. Engagement, sight unseen, then marriage. And if he wasn't ready for that, she wasn't going to give him the out of saying, oh well, you can just say no and we'll date after. I don't regret saying yes to him. My love was blind. I don't see myself continuing to date him. You don't want to pick me. Somebody else will. And as for Clay's mom, well, she's got a few choice words for dad saying that all the marriage stuff he's brought into Clay's life led to Clay's doubts and his decision today. He took a lot of that to the altar with his decision. You have to explain and then apologize. Don't make excuses. Just apologize. Because, as she puts it, the fact that Clay even went into this process shows he wants a marriage and wants a long-lasting life partner. Tell me somebody like you. Huh? I met you, you know, tell me somebody like his mom. Yeah, but you met me, but you wasn't good to me. Ooh, she ate with that one. No crumbs. But as for these two, well, we'll have to wait for the reunion next week to find out if they eventually got back together or not. As now, it's time for Amy and Johnny's wedding, and if even these two break up, well then I'm cancelling my Netflix and yelling, Love is dead! I literally had a dream 
that Amy called me right after she got engaged, and I saw a man in the in the FaceTime, and it was a white blonde man. All right, everyone in Amy's family seems to be having a that so raven premonition about her future. First, there was her dad telling her she was going to have blonde babies, and now this. I mean, ain't no way Crystal Girl Amy is going to say no. And my dad had a dream two years ago that he saw like my future kids, and that they have like light brown blondish hair. So in comes the whole family to have a big, beautiful, tearful moment together, and this one is just a no-brainer. I got my reserve of the experiment, but I changed my mind after I see you happy. And I see Johnny happy. I saw his eyes looking at you, and that's the expectancy that I wanted men to look at you. And you know what's a big green flag for this whole thing? That Johnny's sister is here, probably a bridesmaid. They've also got a spot honoring the grandparents who passed, and the ceremony is being officiated by the fiancé of Johnny's sister. Like, they are taking the extra steps to make this feel like a wedding they would have planned anyway. So if it wasn't obvious that these two were gonna say yes before, well... This is the time that you was waiting for a long time for Johnny. Johnny. Johnny's my person. So Amy hits the aisle, Johnny is there too, and yada yada yada, we all know where this is going. I do. I do. With the power vested in me, it is my honor to now pronounce you man and wife. Boom, love is blind everyone. And honestly, these two look really happy, so finally, Finally, we get some joy, but also the drama was kind of tight this season, not gonna lie. When we first came down to it, I was like, hey, uh, you're out of my league. I wouldn't even count you in a bar. I would have been like, just so just like, <gasps> and the fact that like, she liked me for me and like the looks didn't matter, it was just, <laughs> oh, woo, woo! Love is blind. And well, there you have it. One couple emerges at the end of the season to prove that maybe love isn't blind all the time, but maybe... Love is blurry. Love is blurry. Well, why okay? don't you so that's it for this recap of the Love is Blind season 6 finale. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, comment down below with all your thoughts, including how things might look at the upcoming reunion special, and subscribe to the channel for more content. And until next time, Bachelor Fan Take. Out. You've done exactly what I would want in a wife. You f***ing do! You told me you f***ed her! You just think I'm like full of shit every time I tell you how I feel? I do, I do. Exactly what I would want in a wife.